Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's actually a great pleasure to follow Cardiff Six Form College because um, what, what it accentuates, I think, is uh, the diversity of provision that we have within the UK, within, uh, within boarding education. And um, I know them very well, Henrietta and the Principal Gareth over at Cardiff. So I've spoken to them about what I'm going to say now, and, and we're very much sort of aligned in that regard. In the, the the sort of contrast we offer at Colford is it couldn't be more starkly different. So Cardiff, you, you, you've got a singular focus on the academic performance, university places, and, and it is really sort of focused on achieving those top academic uh, uh, results. It's an international community. It's based in a city um, and they do a fantastic job at, at really prioritising all those things. Colford could couldn't be in more contrast in that, in that we are a rural site. We are in the east of England, as you can see from the map here, just about half an hour from Cambridge, which is about an hour and 45 from Heathrow Airport, an hour and a half. We need to move on. We haven't got the map. We're still on the ready Colford, the future slide. That's the school. Got that map. No bad schools, just bad matches. Is that map now or not? Not yet. No, there's... The no bad schools, just bad matches slides up at the moment. Oh, there's the map. Yep. On the map. Yeah, you're on the map now. OK, so apologies. You can see there where Colford is located. So in complete contrast to Cardiff, which is in the west of the UK, we're in the eastern side of the country, uh, half an hour from Cambridge, an hour 45 from Heathrow, an hour and a half from London. Um, a distinctly different culture and ethos in that we are a traditionally British boarding education um, in, in wonderful grounds, in wonderful grounds, 485 acres of wonderful um, Suffolk Parkland. Are we there, Sue? We're still on the map at the moment. Oh, crumbs, it's obviously taking a bit just to move on. Keep talking, I'll tell you when it comes up. OK, and I think the one thing by working with with Mentor and UCAS, one of the sort of headline things I would say about that is that there are no bad schools in terms of looking at the schools that you're, you're considering at this minute. But what there are are bad matches. And therefore, what I would urge you to do as parents is to really sort of make sure you consider that your child's needs first and match the school to your child and don't try and force your child into the wrong school. And therefore, having having clarity about what you want for your child, having the, the distinctiveness that each of the schools provide will provide a fantastic choice, um, which will ensure that your child gets the very best in terms of, of, of boarding education. OK, we're on the slide of no bad schools, just okay. bad matches now. OK, so this this sets the picture for Colford in terms of our in terms of our parkland. 485 acres of, of uh, wonderful English countryside, never been more relevant in the uh, in the advent of, of, of the COVID pandemic in that we are a very self-contained, very safe environment, medical centre on site, with the cases of COVID being extremely, extremely small within this part of, part of the country. So we've been extremely blessed with our physical environment. Um, important to point out that Culford is, uh, has a prep school, so from the age of seven years of age right the way through to 18 and and we expect the pupils to demonstrate the qualities of flexibility dynamism innovation and resilience and and hopefully you're now seeing a picture of our prep school where we currently have uh, three pupils that have arrived with us from thailand uh, for the start of this term um, we currently have 13 children from thailand across the whole school across the prep school and the senior school which provides a really nice balance of, uh, of pupils to travel with each other and to support each other throughout their school life. But equally, they're not going to be surrounded by children from the same country. So they experience that British culture with a, with a vibrant international community um, as well. It's never been more important, I don't think, to, to bring the qualities of, of flexibility, dynamism, innovation and resilience to, to school life. And I think as a school, we've had to live those values in putting together a really exciting curriculum so, for example, at the minute we have six pupils who started at Colford in September, but are still currently in Thailand, but are, are experiencing an online academic provision. That means when they join us, either after October half term or in uh, January, they will be absolutely up to speed and it will have no impact on their academic progress. Um, 
So the key thing is at the moment the, at the school in that, yes, we've had to cope with COVID. Has it been a challenge? Yeah, huge challenge for every school in the world to sort of cope with that. But equally, I think at Colford, it's thrown up an opportunity in that we've, we've expected children to have to learn in different ways, teachers to teach in different ways. And I think one thing that it has allowed us to do at Colford is to really revolutionise our academic proposition. So rather than setting pupils now homework to consolidate the learning in the lesson that they've done, we're actually setting them work in the, outside the classroom to prepare them for when they come into the classroom. So pupils and teachers are now engaged in genuine debate, critical thinking, higher order thinking skills, which is all preparing the pupils for life beyond school, beyond university, in fact, and, and in the workplace. The use of um, blended learning, use of ICT through, uh, through Google Classrooms has been absolutely underpinning the academic provision over recent months. And it's something we've continued with during term time. So every lesson that gets taught within the classroom exists on, the, on, the, uh, on Google Classrooms. So pupils that miss lessons, pupils that want to prepare for lessons, pupils that want to consolidate their work have got all the opportunity that they need to do in, in order to achieve that. More recently, you can see the library hopefully in front of you now. The two and a half. We're not moving on on the slides. We're still on the no bad school slide. Oh, okay. Uh, there we go. That's maybe the library. Yeah. More. Are we onto the library then? Got seventy percent at the top. Right. Okay. Thanks, Sue. So well, this has been one of our more recent facilities that we've invested in in recent times, a two and a half million pound library that sits right in the heart of the school to make sure we're providing state of the art facilities for, for pupils within the school. This library stays open till 9.30 at night. So again, it's a facility that children can use during the school day, but also use during their, their evening studies. Um, 70% of our pupils A star to B, 50% achieved A, B, B or the equivalent. And while on the face of it, you know, other schools would be able to boast higher results, as we've heard from Cardiff, and they do an amazing job. However, what I would say is we take a far broader range of academic children. And our recent ISA inspection report identified the value that we add at Colford has been outstanding. And I think if we had to summarise our aspiration at the school academically, it's to ensure that children, when they arrive with us, achieve beyond what they would expect to do. We offer a huge amount of individual support. We offer classroom support, capture sessions, and really important for international pupils, we offer really strong language support to make sure that children can access the curriculum quickly, develop their confidence, and then achieve grades that allow them to travel on to their, their, their their choice of years at university. Three Oxbridge kids this last year. So again, when we have children who are academically really able, we do a fantastic job in supporting them on that journey, but we equally allow children to combine their academic aspirations with a broader range of interests, activities, sports, um, music and drama as well. Is that inside the library, Sue? Still outside the library. Don't quite. There we are. We're inside okay. now. Yep. Now, our sixth form life is really distinctive at the school. And within the library, we've created a study lounge for the sixth form specifically, because it's really important for us that pupils not, not only are preparing to conclude their school days and preparing for university life, but equally important, they're preparing the skills to go within the workplace. And we think by creating this distinctive area, a specific social area, specific academic support, um, extended qualification projects, tutorials, um, university preparation that were actually enabling pupils to, to look beyond school to their work life to develop those leadership skills and those core skills of communication that will serve them extremely effectively. We're back on the map now. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's just uh, not. Is this moving the slides now, so or not? No, still just seeing the map. Oh, yeah, there's a picture. One of our the most recent facility that we've opened um, at the school is a fantastic state of the art art department, which again puts a, a really strong emphasis on that all round education that pupils will be academically ambitious, 
but they will be involved in sport, music, drama, and the creative and the performing arts. And I think it's a really important point of distinction to make about life at Colford, that not only are we looking to prepare pupils for the academic journey they have in front of them, but we're also preparing them for that all round um, contribution to school life and then life beyond there as well. Um, we have a full commitment boarding slide or not? No, it was still in the art room, but it's very nice. Oh, there we are, we're on to boarding, yep. As I said right at the start, we are, uh, we are a British boarding school with 60% of our boarding of our school population being boarders. Majority of the time, the pupils will be in a shared room to develop their friendships and their camaraderie within year groups. And then they then go into a single room for the conclusion of their studies. We have a seven day a week propo um, proposition at the school, Saturday morning school, Saturday afternoon sports, full activities program at the weekend that ensures children are really busy throughout the whole of the term. And we do not have leave weekends where children have got to leave the school in any weekend. They stay with us while it's term time and really benefit from the boarding community. And I think it's one of those really distinctive features of the school with 400 pupils in the school, approximately 220 boarders. The one thing that we work extremely hard and successfully to do is to develop a really strong um, sense of community which the pupils find extremely supportive, particularly those children that you know are, are, are a long way from home and that can generate feelings of uncertainty and homesickness where a really strong supportive boarding community can really support children. And there's a really sort of clear sort of mantra really, if pupils feel secure in their environment, they stand every success of being confident in their learning. And if we achieve that, then the key thing is that they will be happy. And fundamentally, that then is the springboard for them to achieve within the classroom and also outside the classroom as well. OK, we're back on the map. Yeah, I know we are. It's just... Uh... It's a lovely map. It's very nice to see where the school is in such a great location. Okay. Um, yep. An important part, of, we, we are located 30 minutes from Cambridge and therefore being relevant for, for families um, from all over the world is absolutely essential for us. 25% of our pupils are international pupils and they come from 16 different nationalities and we limit any one nationality to make sure that that the, the culture and the ethos of the school is very much a British one, but with an exciting, vibrant international community. And I think that's a really, a, a really, a real strength of the school, that pupils not only benefit from the culture and the ethos that they've come to the country for, but they also then experience a, a broader and more diverse experience within the school. As I said right at the start, what I'm really keen to do is to provide some clarity about what distinctive features we, we have as a school. One of the key areas that we've developed in the recent months is the performing arts within the school, which is situated in the, in the wonderful old hall that we saw right at the start. Um, in addition to that, we've developed some, some key um, programmes at the school that are um, of a national and an international standard that pupils do come from all over the world to benefit from. Um, and these facilities are, we have the number one tennis programme in the, in, in the country with ten indoor, six indoor tennis courts, ten coaches and players of all standards and all abilities able to take advantage of the indoor tennis facilities all year round. And as I say, this is one of the sort of distinctive features of the school that allows children to combine their academic life with their uh, with their passion for a particular sport. And we send about six pupils every year to top American universities in order to be able to pursue their, their academic dreams with, with their sports. Our number one tennis player at the moment is number one in, in the country, but in a year early, he has six A star stars already at GCSE. He's taking far, five more and is predicted. So it isn't really a story about the development of sport. It's far more about combining your academic um, pursuits with your passion for an, an individual support sport. And again, what we've delivered from a, from a tennis perspective, we've produced exactly the same thing for, uh, for our golfers. And these sports show a really clear statement of intent, actually, for pupils from all over the world to come and not only just benefit from a British education, but maintain interests that, you know, that are, that are globally recognised uh, and globally accepted.
And what we're really committed to at Culford is providing a broad boarding education in which children, first and foremost, are looked after on a pastoral level with meeting their tutors, close relationships with their house staff. So when children do travel from all over the world, they feel secure, they feel happy uh, and they feel confident in their environment. We believe really passionately that that is the springboard for achieving academic success and something we're extremely proud of. So I'd be delighted to talk to anybody on an individual level, you know, in, in due course. And thank you very much for your time this, this morning.